I'm not going to put a blade in here because I have an alignment plate, which is for purposes of what we're doing. It's just a not very straight piece of stainless uh, steel. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you something about this because um, it's important to know that every blade is going to have a little bit, every blade is going to have a little bit of twitch to it. It's not going to be 100% perfect. And with the technique that we do, it doesn't matter. I had to cheat a little bit. I don't have a vise on this machine yet, and this is aluminum and the magnet won't stick to aluminum, so I had to just grab a little chunk of metal and stick it on here. Um, but basically, what I do is on my plate, and what you should do is on your blade, you get a black Sharpie and you make an X. Now we have two X's here. Um, since there's two, I have to choose one and I wanna set my indicator so I'm low on this thing so I get the most amount of travel. So now, now when you set your indicator, you want it as perpendicular to the surface as you can get it. Doesn't have to be perfect, but if it closer it is, the better. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna take the set screws down so they're touching the bearing. Now, I don't know what my bearing location is, Visually, I look at it and I try and get the gap between the two bearings here and here the same. And when I have that, then I'm gonna set my indicator to zero. And you gotta make sure this is tight. And again, if your carriage is moving all around, then you really have to be careful not to touch it. So when I move the carriage, you'll see my hand is down here. I don't touch the cross feed because if I move that even a little bit, it can throw off my measurement. So I set zero, I'm not perfectly on zero, but I'm close. And for the first pass, it's fine. And then I'm gonna move the carriage from here. Now, what I'm gonna do is when I move this carriage, I'm gonna turn the blade. Now, when I am doing this indication, I have to follow on the point not indicate across the face. If I indicate across the face, any error that's in my flanges, that's in my run out on my blade, that error is gonna be translated into error in the alignment. So what I do by, by indicating the point here to the same point back here is I guarantee you that this axis is gonna be perfectly perpendicular to the travel of the carriage. So I'll illustrate that now as you come back in closer. I'm gonna come forward and I'm almost touching my flange, so I gotta move up and reset my zero. If you bump your flange, it will change your indicator setting. So I come in and I'm looking for the indicator to move. It's come up one revolution. So I've come up 165. So now what I'm gonna do is some really simple math. I'm gonna take 165 and divide by two. Now, the indicator's turning to the right. That tells me this face of the blade is in this direction, it's high. So this is low. This is low and this is high. So this blade is angled like this right now. So to do that, I, I am not gonna mess with these screws. I'm gonna focus on these screws. If I push this screw here, it's gonna push the bearing, which means that my angle is gonna come back. Now, why on the first push I wanna take half is because of the relationship. As I move this edge, this edge is also moving. So if I go, Let's say 160, I wanna to move to 80. So now I'm gonna run my indicator back until I get right here to 80. Now what I'm gonna do, because I'm, I'm pretty confident that my math is gonna put me pretty close, is I'm gonna start tightening these screws up a little bit so I have some pressure on the bearing. 
at, at the 80 mark. So I'm pushing front, I'm pushing back, and then I'm on 80. So now I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna get on the zero here and it's on 70. Now that's good news because if I'm on 80 at the back and 70 at the front, it means I'm only 10 off. So now I'm gonna check my work, re-zero and come back here. I'm gonna go the same thing and there I am, I'm 10 off. So I'm 10 high right now. Now when I'm that close, what I want to do is I wanna tighten these bearings. But this is gonna move me some, but I know I'm within 10. Now 10, 10 for purposes of understanding, 10 is the thickness of a human hair, an average human hair. That's three thousandths of an inch. So now I'm gonna tighten these two bolts up. And as you can see, I'm getting them pretty darn tight. They're seven sixteenths bolt. They can take a good bit of torque. So now my bolts are tight. Now I'm gonna come back here and look at my zero. And my zero moved just a little bit when I tighten the bearings. Now I'm gonna come down here and you'll see it move down, but it's coming back. That tells me the plate's not flat. And now I'm plus 10. So plus mean I'm out this way. I'm, my plate is out this way. So what I wanna do is I wanna still keep pushing on this screw. Now I'm pretty tight here, so I'm gonna have to loosen my other screw. And, and if you watch the indicator when I loosen it, you'll see it's moving. Now I'm gonna take it to five, and push back on it a little bit. Take it to five, and now I'm five on the other side. Now, my standard is when we align these, I wanna be within three, which is one thousandths of an inch, basically. Close to that, at least. Now, I can guarantee you, we're the only saws that are close to one thousandths of an inch leaving the factory because if you don't have the alignment screws, you can't do it. So, I'm 0.01 mm in accuracy. So there it is, it's aligned. Now that wasn't hard, was it? So, now you know that that blade is gonna run perfectly true. Now, if you're getting wedge-shaped shaped slabs, and I'm gonna talk about the blade alignment for a little bit. Now, I'm gonna do this because sometimes it's easier to see. I'm gonna loosen this up. And basically, if you look at the blade and you imagine if you're out of alignment this way and you start cutting, that what happens is it starts pulling the blade in further and further, which means it's trying to dig into the rock and it may actually pull the blade into the edge of the carriage or edge of the vise. That's basically a real bad situation because what happens then is it actually starts to deform the blade permanently. This is what we call dishing. Now dishing, the best way to check for, if you have a blade that you're having problems with your saw, you have a, a blade that, that you think might be dished is you get a, a hard metal ruler, a good ruler, and you lay it across the inner part of the blade inside the teeth. And if you are touching on the outside and a gap in the middle, or you're touching in the middle and a gap on the outside, your blade is dished. And you check this side and you check that side, you'll see the dish will be the opposite on the other side. If your blade is dished, there used to be shops that would would fix that, but there's not really anybody that does that now. Partly because the cost of the blades has come down a lot. Now, I'm gonna talk about the other way here. So, if your blade, if, if your arbor's out of alignment in this way, what happens is it starts cutting, and as you go, the rock starts actually pressing into the inside of the blade. And again, you're not gonna get a parallel slab, and you're gonna, destroy the blade after very little use. If you run a saw where the arbor is not aligned, it will destroy the blade very fast. You can put a brand new perfect blade on a bad arbor, or if the arbor bearings are bad, where it allows the blade to move 
front to back some, if the alignment's changing. If that axis, if that axis moves, then with the movement, you're gonna see that the blade has changed engagement in the rock. 